This is Jamal Bowman, the representative from New York's 16th District. Recently, Bowman appeared in a video from Now This News regarding the Second Amendment. Gun enthusiasts typically look to the Second Amendment as a means to defend gun ownership. But there's one phrase in the amendment that might provide some clarity on what the Founding Fathers envisioned when they initially wrote it. The phrase is well regulated. Right now, we do not have guns that are well regulated in our nation. And there it is, a classic Democrat talking point. Guns need to be well regulated, even though the Second Amendment doesn't say well regulated guns or well regulated arms. But it does say well regulated militia. And well regulated doesn't have the same meaning in the 21st century as it did in the 18th. Jack Rakove, the Pulitzer Prize winning author and professor of political science and law at Stanford University, explains. One of the biggest challenges in interpreting a centuries old document is that the meanings of words change or diverge. Well regulated in the 18th century tended to be something like well organized, well armed, well disciplined. It didn't mean regulation in the sense that we use it now, in that it's not about the regulatory state. There's been nuance there. It means the militia was in an effective shape to fight. In other words, it didn't mean that the state was controlling the militia in a certain way, but rather that the militia was prepared to do its duty. And of course, Representative Bowman is completely ignoring the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, but you know, it's not important or anything. In District of Columbia v. Heller, the Supreme Court held that the Second Amendment protects an individual right to possess a firearm unconnected with service in a militia, and to use that arm for traditionally lawful purposes such as self-defense within the home. But of course, Democrats don't care about the Constitution or the Supreme Court, so moving on. We have grown tremendously in gun ownership, doubling the number of guns that are owned over the last 20 years. First of all, who cares? Law-abiding citizens are allowed to own guns. In fact, they should be encouraged. And I don't know about the last 20 years, but I know about the last few. According to an analysis by The Trace, between 2020 and 2022, Americans purchased 57.2 million guns, 37.9% of which were purchased in 2020. You know, when the fiery but mostly peaceful protests were happening. The other 62.1% occurred after Joe Biden took office and started making dubious claims about the United States Constitution and firearms in general. From the very beginning, the Second Amendment didn't say you can own any gun you want, as big as you want. You couldn't buy a cannon when, in fact, the Second Amendment passed. And certain people from the very beginning weren't allowed to purchase guns. You couldn't own a cannon. You couldn't own certain kinds of weapons. Do you realize the bullet out of an AR-15 travels five times as rapidly as a bullet shot out of any other gun? What purpose is to have a gun that can a bullet can travel five times the speed of an ordinary bullet. It's a weapon of war. And I know it's controversial, but I got it done once. Ban assault weapons and high capacity magazines. And I'm determined once again to ban assault weapons and high capacity magazines. And by the way, it's going to sound bizarre. I support the Second Amendment. <laughs> Bullshit. We've gone from 2% to 25% of gun owners having assault weapons. We've gone from 2% to 25%. Over how long a period of time? And what exactly does he mean by assault weapons? Look, I honestly have no idea where Representative Bowman is getting this statistic. Believe me, I looked. So I think he's just pulling it out of his ass. And in this exchange with Representative Thomas Massey, you can see that Bowman cares more about emotions than facts. Would you more guns lead to more death! Would you more death? guns lead to more death! Look at the data! You're not looking at any data! No, you're no, you're, no, you're no, carrying the water for the gun lobby! No, no, Look no, at the data! More guns lead to more deaths! Guns, states that have open carry laws have more death! So Bowman just said, states that have open carry laws have more death. Which I'm sure you can guess is not true. States like Maine, Vermont, and New Hampshire which allow open carry without a permit, I might add, not only have very low total deaths by firearms, but have very low firearm homicide rates, 
California, Illinois, and New York, however, states that do not allow open carry have significantly higher deaths by firearms, as well as higher firearm homicide rates. And I should point out that most states allow open carry, with the exception of California, Florida, Illinois, and New York. So Bowman's statement about open carry being connected to more homicides has no basis in fact. I know you're shocked, but if I had to bet money, I'd say that Bowman doesn't actually understand what open carry means, but whatever. Check out this stat. We are 4% of the world's population, but we own 40% of the world's guns. And check out this stat. 52% of homicides were committed by 13% of the population. Ah, we won't go into that. Enough is enough. Something has to be done. We need common sense gun reform legislation. You should not just be able to walk into a gun dealer and purchase a gun without a background check. And that's not true. Federal law requires, at minimum, when you walk into any gun shop to purchase a firearm, your information goes into the National Instant Criminal Background Check System. That is, unless you reside in certain states and have a permit like a concealed weapons license. Having one qualifies as an alternative to an instant background check. So does that mean Bowman is right? <laughs> of course not. Because to get one of these, you need to go through an extensive background check. So no, you can't just walk into a gun dealer and buy a gun without a background check. You gotta love when a lawmaker doesn't understand laws. Universal safe storage that would dramatically decrease the number of accidents that we see happen in homes across the country. First of all, if anyone under the age of 18 is living in your residence, you need to make sure that your firearms are not accessible to them. That's just basic common sense. And most states have child access prevention laws on the books already. But universal safe storage laws would require that all firearms are stored, locked, and unloaded, except when it is under the direct control of the owner. Which is stupid. But don't worry, I'm sure that the home invader will give you a heads up so that you have enough time to fumble to unlock where your gun is stored and then be able to unlock the gun itself. We also need to make sure we ban assault weapons. Civilians should not have assault weapons. They are weapons of war. When the Second Amendment was written, they weren't talking about assault rifles that could fire 100 rounds in a minute. They were talking about guns that could shoot three rounds per minute. So first, Bowman is referring to a musket, which a well-trained soldier could load and fire in about 20 seconds, i.e. three times in a minute. And by Representative Bowman's logic, since muskets were used in the Revolutionary War, they're weapons of war, so I guess you can't have those either. But what Bowman is saying is that if AR-15s existed back in the 18th century, the Founding Fathers would have been like, Oh wow, that gun is too dangerous. We better not allow people to have them because someone could get hurt. Passing the assault weapons ban in HR 8 is crucial to the lives of over 40,000 Americans that die at the hands of gun violence every single year. We can save lives. 40,000 lives every single year, guys. Except that according to the FBI, in 2019, which is the most recent available data, there were 10,258 homicides involving a firearm, and 3.5% of those cases involved rifles, the category which could include assault weapons. But you know, if we banned assault weapons, we could save 40,000 lives a year or something. There are 120.5 guns for every 100 people in America. We must prioritize people over weapons of war and ban assault rifles and semi-automatic guns. Bowman is saying the quiet part out loud. They not only want to ban assault rifles, but also semi-automatic guns. And of course, the majority of firearms in the United States are semi-automatic, like this HKP-30. Which means that you can all but guarantee that the second they ban assault rifles, that they'll start using the same language to try and ban everything else. <laughs> That's a semi-automatic assault pistol. It's a weapon of war. So we need for the president to stretch his authority as far as it can go and seek to use executive action to ban assault rifles. Now, this will probably be challenged in court, but if it is, so be it. So Democrats like Bowman will scream up and down that we almost lost our democracy on January 6th. But at the same time, Bowman is like, F it, 
Joe Biden should declare a ban on assault rifles, even if it's unconstitutional. And with Bowman, Joe Biden is the answer to everything. Joe Biden needs to take executive action to stop quote unquote wealthy price gouging landlords. Joe Biden needs to sidestep Congress and raise the debt ceiling himself. And of course, my favorite demand. Education should be free, and POTUS could start that process by canceling the over $1.75 trillion of student debt. POTUS should sign an executive order today, canceling all student debt. Let's get it done. Hey POTUS, canceling $10,000 of student debt isn't enough. Cancel it all. I mean, who cares about passing legislation in the House and the Senate? when you can beg Joe Biden to set off a constitutional crisis. Democrats claim to be the protectors of democracy until it gets in their way. Anyway, that's it for now. Follow me on Twitter at Don't Walk Run. Be sure that you're still subscribed to the channel. And as always, thanks for tuning in and I hope to see you next time. If there is next time. <laughs>